Are you struggling with finding a sense of purpose now that you've retired? It can be hard. It really can. We're so used to going to work on a day-to-day basis and it feels like that's our sense of purpose or raising our children when we were younger, huge purpose. But when we retire and our kids are more independent and it's kind of just us and maybe ourselves and a spouse, it can feel really like you're untethered. You can feel really lost. And sometimes it can be really hard to find a sense of purpose in this part of life. Let's talk about the three things that I think hold people back when they're trying to discover their new sense of purpose. I know firsthand how I struggled with finding a sense of purpose when I first retired. And so I thought it would be a good idea to sit down and start this conversation. The first potential myth about purpose that occurred to me is that you often hear about purpose in the singular. And when I was struggling with finding a sense of purpose after retirement, I kept thinking about it in the singular, like it was one purpose that I needed to discover. And actually what I found as time went on, that it was many purposes, that actually the more things that I found a purpose in, the better off I was. Because then when one starts to go away, or change, you still have the others to really hang on to while that other one is fluctuating or while new purposes are coming into your life. So when you think about finding purpose, don't limit yourself to just one thing. Think about it in terms of all the things in your life. When we have a job that defines us, that gets us up out of the bed every morning, it's really easy to hang the sense of purpose on that job. But when we are no longer doing that, and in fact, probably no longer doing any job, it becomes, it it feels kind of nebulous. Like now what am I doing? What am I here for? But if we focus instead on finding several purposes, it becomes a little bit easier. You really can have several things in your life that create a sense of purpose for you. So don't limit yourself to one. I, I think limiting yourself to one thing, one big thing feels very daunting. And it feels like you're hanging, you know, putting all your eggs in that one basket. But it's not really how that works out for most people. The second potential myth that I think people fall into the trap of is the sense that when you identify a purpose in your life, that it's forever. This is my purpose. This one great big, huge forever thing is my purpose. And again, it's not, it doesn't have to be the one purpose. And that purpose doesn't have to laugh. (laughs) That purpose does not have to last forever. Maybe you choose your purpose as again, a volunteer, a volunteer organization. I use that as an example a lot because it's easy, but Maybe your purpose is around um, the homeless issue in your area, and you're going to put a lot of time and effort into that. And then after, you know, a period of time, you find that you've really done what you can do there and your interests or um, ideas start moving in a different direction. Maybe it's, you know what I'm saying. Just because you identify a purpose doesn't mean you have to hang on to it for the rest of your life. It can and will, I promise you, it can and will change over time. So allow yourself that flexibility. Allow yourself to say, you know, I really think my purpose right now is X or X, Y, and Z. But maybe six months from now, that's going to look very different. Maybe it's Z and (laughs) AB. You know what I'm getting at. So it's not just one thing. And it's not something you have to commit to or hold on to forever. It can change over time, just like you change over time. And so in fact, it should change over time, unless it's something super core to who you are fundamentally as a human being. And that's, you know, you have that ability to have that drive towards that one purpose. Maybe that's it. And that's fine. I'm not saying that that's not okay. I'm just saying that for most people, it's not one thing and it's not forever. And that brings me to the third myth, the third potential myth is that 
your purpose has to be huge and deep and meaningful and impactful and you know things like i'm going to change the world by doing this or um you know my purpose is about you understand what i'm saying it it often when i hear somebody say what is your purpose in life it feels singular it feels forever and it feels like it has to be huge and I think that's where as retirees, it can feel really scary to be searching for and trying to figure out what your purpose is now that you're not working and to have just these huge expectations around what that means. And in fact, there's a movie, um, I think it's a Pixar slash Disney movie called Soul and it's from 2020, I believe. I think it came out during the pandemic um or right about there and that movie it's about several things but for me what i took out of it was that was the idea around how we how we identify our purpose or life's purpose and i'm not going to spoil it for you because i really want you to watch it if you can but it really dives into dispelling all of these myths and really focuses you on purpose as being very small and very um, fleeting almost in the moment and and around purpose, now I'm rambling. Um, It dispels the myth that purpose needs to be this massive, you know, big life changing thing. And rather it focuses on purpose being a very present in the moment, day to day, the small things about life that really matter. And regardless of your circumstance, you can, if you decide you want to, really focus on what's in front of you every single day. What are the small things that bring you joy? What are the things that you can do to enjoy your life more, to find a sense of purpose? It might be if you have a pet that you focus on your pet as your purpose. You know, when you get up in the morning, you have to feed that cat. You have to feed that dog. You have to walk your dog. You have to, you know, when they want to cuddle on your lap, you scratch them. That's purpose. Believe it or not, that's actually purpose. That pet counts on you for food, for safety, for warmth, and for love. And that in and of itself is a purpose. It might not be your only purpose, but it is a purpose. And your other purpose might be, you know, if as the kids are walking by on their way to school in the morning, being there on your front porch, waving to them, telling them to have a great day or whatever that looks like. There are so many bits and pieces of life that are that are very small, but that actually really add to your internal sense of purpose. And and maybe there's maybe that's the bonus piece is that purpose isn't always about something externally. Purpose is about internal your your internal sense of how you're connected to the world, how you're connected to other people, how you're connected to nature, how you are, how you are on a day to day basis and and all of the things that you do and how you make people feel and and so on and so forth. So does that make sense? Do you, I, sometimes I have a hard time with these things that are, they're both complex and yet they're so simple. And sometimes I have a really hard time distilling that down um, outside of my own head. But if, if I could give you some homework, if you are struggling with purpose, if you feel like you don't have purpose in your life, I'm not saying I guarantee this is going to solve all your problems, but maybe start with rethinking what purpose is and and how you think about purpose maybe think about you know check yourself a little bit and and see are you are you 
trying to find that one thing and that the commitment to that one thing feels off. Um, are you thinking about it in the forever sense? And that just feels again, like a big commitment, like, gosh, what if I'm, this thing is my purpose, but maybe not forever. Yeah, that's right. And, and maybe you're thinking about it as this great big grand thing. It has to be huge. Get rid of that too. Maybe make sure that you are opening up your mind and your heart to thinking about purpose in such a way where it's not just one thing, it's not forever, and it doesn't have to be huge or grand or important. It can be many things. It can change from a day-to-day -day basis, and it can be very, very small relatively. Think about it that way. What do you think? Does that help at all? I'd love to hear your thoughts on, especially if you've gone through this process, if you've gone through the, the retirement transition and having to sort of refine yourself as they used to say in the seventies, um, have you successfully done that? And how do you think about purpose? We can all learn from each other down here in the comments. And if, if you're just starting this journey, or if you're, if you've been retired for a few years and you're still really struggling with this, I challenge you to really think about these three myths and see if that's what's holding you back. And if it is, I hope that it helps you change that. And maybe it's something else. Maybe it's, maybe I've missed the boat entirely and it's something else. And I would love to hear about that too. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. If you're still here and you're not a subscriber, would really love for you to, to join me in future videos. So please subscribe, like, comment, do all the things, and I will see you next time.